I wanted to quote what the Marchesa Casati once said, which was that she wanted to make of herself a living work of art. I was wondering, do you relate dressing and living as a kind of performance art? I don't know. You know, the thing is, I don't think you can be objective about yourself. And I think that, I think if you, I mean, it's an interesting thing to go and say, because I think if you, if you say it, then you're already too self-conscious. Mm. Um, and to have an aim like that is not an artistic aim, in my view. I don't know. I mm. mean, I think that, I think art is something, people say, what do you do? And I don't even dare say I'm in the arts, because it's up to other people to say if you're in the arts or not, or whatever. People love labels. Um, I think it's. I think it's a. I think the Marca, um, Marquesa Casati was was extraordinary, um, in so many ways. But I think it's sort of like kind of. Um, I think if you become too self-conscious, or you t if you make it, I mean, if you have to have a million stylists, or you have to have, you know, if you're sort of running through looks like no tomorrow. I mean, that I just. The, the, there comes a point where it's sort of slightly desperate. And um, and that's not artistic. I think it has to sort of grow. I may be wrong. I mean, it may be. I mean, there are def definitely different sorts of art. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm no expert, but um, I mean, I've had the same things for years and years and years and years. Even if I didn't wear them when I was, you know, when I was having children and stuff, I had them. I, w I you know, I was just collecting them and. And I don't change. I mean, it's just like I don't sort of suddenly go through, you know, I don't suddenly think, oh, wow, I'm just going to, you know, it's going to be short skirts or something like that. So fashion, actually, I don't find that very interesting. Um, I, find, I find the I idea of being able to transform yourself um, because we can, and because we're human beings, that's interesting. I read as well that you grew up in, or at least spent part of your childhood in Karakay, yeah. and Dali was your next door neighbour. We lived in a chapel up the mountain, and still do, and um, he lived in Purigat, which was down by the sea, and um, and he, my mother was, I think she was, well she, well, she was, her first husband was his only pupil, and she, um, he was her great mentor. And there was also Man Ray, and there was also Duchamp, and there was, I mean, he died when I was one, so. Spending part of your childhood in that kind of community is bound to shape your aesthetic and shape your approach to life and to art and things like that. Definitely, because there were three sections. There were the locals, there were the artists, and then there were the kind of, then there were the, the pilgrims that would sort of come and kind of try and, I don't know, be part of the scene. And quite a lot of them, sort of just ended up staying there. A lot of people living in caves all over the mountains, um, quite kind of, and, and it was completely normal. And, uh, but when I sort of tried to describe, you know, when you had to write your sort of essay, your first essay in September, my summer holiday, <laughs> I mean, everybody else said, you know, I went to uh, sort of somewhere incredibly normal and, and I'd sort of write these things and they'd think I was lying. So it was just absolutely awful. So I sort of had to kind of um, <coughs> try and skip that essay or not be there for the first time. <laughs> Looking back on it, yes, it was a very um, different childhood, but it wasn't, I'm so glad it wasn't sort of Marbella or Saint-Tropez. There, I mean, there, there is not a shop there. I mean, mm. you can buy espadrille, you can buy, you can buy bread, and you can buy, you know, just the basics, and that's it. There's not one boutique, there's nothing, and it's not trendy, which is fantastic. I'm glad I've had such a disparate upbringing. I'm, re I'm really glad because, I mean, it's sort of endlessly fascinating. Wouldn't it be just awful if you just kind of like lived in kind of, you know, isolated splendor and sort of never, never seen any of this? And, um, and some of the, some of the, some of the, some of those people, you know, the people that one met when one was, when, one, when, when I was a child anyway, had still today had an enormous influence on me. Can you remember the, the first piece of oak couture that you bought? Yes. I, um, Have you still got it? Yes, I do. And it still fits. And it was cut by Mr. Paquita, who was a cutter at Chanel at the time. And, he, and, it, looks, and it looks great. And, uh, 
And then I have a, um, I have one of the first, I have one of the first pieces, well, one of the pieces from the first La Croix exhibition, which, I mean, the first, the, the, the 87. Uh, yeah. Oh. Pony skin, you know. And I think it's that particular moment as well in the 80s and that, oh, that Haute Couture moment was, it, it was an incredible moment for yeah. fashion and for sort of, for luxury. And yeah, for this and idea people of didn't know about couture really. As, I mean, you know, you d people thought, people thought that pret a porter and couture were the same things. They didn't realise that in fact it was a much smaller thing and actually very few, I mean, just few editors would go, but it would be mainly friends there. It wouldn't be kind of, um, it wasn't what it is now because now it's become sort of ubiquitous and everybody sort of, you know, and and that's where it gets its bad name from. But in fact, that's the sort of, that's the living soul of, 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 of dressmaking and of, 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 uh, of clothes. I mean, I know that, and, and it's true because some, the, some, some clothes are clothes and I think there may be one example, which is our McQueen, mm. but, uh, the, you know, it's, 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 um, it, it depresses me because people get, well, you know, obviously just always dressed in haute couture. I mean, honestly, some of my things that are couture, I bought in Portobello Market and then I sort of rearranged it myself, you know mm. what I mean? And you just think, hang on a second, I mean, can't you tell the difference? You talk about the system of fashion and, you know, it is a system and you, you're getting things now where people are showing things and then you're, you can buy them straight away after the show. The great thing about haute couture is that it's the antithesis of that. Right? And you have to engage. You it's have to engage and you have to, like, you have to make a commitment to, uh, you know, going for fittings. or even if, it's, even if you're making it yourself, I mean, you've got to put in some work. And, um, I mean, couture is... Be, people think couture just means expensive. Mm. And that's just, that's completely wrong. I mean, yes, it, it, you know, if you are buying something that's, you know, you know, beaded from head foot to foot by Lesage, of course it's expensive. But, I mean, it's, it's no different from having a sort of bespoke uh, uh, suit made a, a, in Savile Row or, 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 or anywhere or in Hong Kong. Couture, it, I mean, it, 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 you know, in, in France it, it, it has rules that it, it follows. Mm. Um, but it, 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 it also is, it's, it's part of our civilization. Which I think as well is something a lot of people aren't aware of with couture. Like you said, it, it, they don't yeah. realize it's, you're not paying for the name, you're paying for the but a lot of people and the concentration of the work. Yeah, and, and I think it shows, I mean, it's funny, the more intention that you put into something, the more that you can see it. I think, I think anybody who sort of like just runs something off very very quickly and just writes their name on it. You can see it, mm. and and the more you concentrate on something, the more of yourself is invested in it. And even if you just make one, which is about all I can manage normally, <laughs> but it's um you know it's it's uh it it, it just means so much more. And, and unless I could unless I could do it, and and be and be able to talk about it and be able to. Um, and to, I mean, honestly, swear that it, it's 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 a it's something that you have invested yourself in. It doesn't mean anything, you know. You, you and I don't know you, the thing about couture, which I find very very sad. And I and I did think that I have the highest respect for Pierre Berger, but I I did think that this thing about um, in the late eighties, early nineties, when they were shutting all the couture houses mm. in Paris. It was very sad because it, it, it was, you know, two, three hundred years worth of, 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 of families that knew how to make lace, that knew how to sew. I mean, these are these are industries. These are jobs. This is not just about rich people putting on something so that they look and look better than everybody else. It really isn't about that. We've talked a lot about kind of history and haute couture and the tradition of that, but I'm also interested in the fact that you you're incredibly supportive of people like Gareth, and you were on the Dorchester Award, and you know, this kind of support of Blimey. new talent. I like young designers. I think that's the way forward. And, I, and, I'm, and ye yes, the sort of Chanel Dior 
that whole thing worked in the 70s and I think that will continue to work. But what I don't like is the idea, apart, apart from I think Sarah's doing a fantastic job with McQueen, but it's sort of like saying, okay, fine, let's find, let's find an old house. Oh, Poirot, yeah, and then we'll put a new design. Just, just like, let's have a new designer. That's mm -hmm. very, that's 21st century. Not just sort of resuscitating old houses. Because A, you can't find those, the, the women to work there anymore, or the men. And, uh, and also, isn't it more interesting to have new houses rather than dead designers? The fashion industry is an industry built on the new, but a lot of the time people are so afraid of anything genuinely new in fashion. Well, I think the suits don't get it. Mm. I just think they don't understand a thing about fashion, and you can see. And soon, uh, it's the same with film. As soon as, I mean, I'm not saying that, I mean, of course you need money in order to do things, um, but you don't need, the thing is, don't hire someone for their name. You, you hire someone for their talent. Mm. And if you start trying to change that, hire someone else or do it yourself. But don't just, don't muddle in with the artistic process too much because you can really crush an artist. I mean, they're, they're, the, they're pretty sensitive. Um, um, and, and, and also the amount that they're supposed to sort of shove out every year, you know, from, from accessories to glasses to you know, whatever. I mean, of course they're going to have a meltdown. It's, it's, it's impossible. I would hate to be a designer or, or have to do, a, a, you know, many, many, many collections. I wanted to talk about the glove. Well, can you explain a little bit? You know what it was, is I hate going to parties. Um, I get really nervous. A, I'm always on my own. And B, uh, or I'm with, I'm with Sean, or I was with Lee, or I'd be with Philip. Thank God. I mean, that's why... I, that's why it's sort of lovely to be called a socialite because if only, I mean, I sort of keep thinking, you know, it makes me sound as if I'm terribly confident, sort of like walking into a room. Uh, no, I don't think so. But anyway, the, uh, uh, the yeah, well, so we were standing in a corner one night about five years ago and saying, God, I hate it. Oh, I really hate it. And then Lee was there going, God, I hate this too. God, I, I said, I just want to make a suit of armor. So Sean said, well, we could start. I said, well, yeah. Anyway, so that's how it happened, and sort of, you know, three weeks later, there was my arm in a bucket of uh, plaster, and it sort of s it, it started from there, and I mean, it, and it and it has developed, and it was always it was always to do with being against or feeling that the world was quite a dangerous place, and 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 also, it's not <laughs> what I what I dislike about jewelry. I mean, I love jewelry but it doesn't have to be real. But I, I dislike the sort of idea of it sort of being, you know, like a price tag around someone's neck. You know, it needs to be something else, you know. And, and, and there is something extremely magical about, about armour. Has it been like a process then of reworking the idea over and over and getting it to a kind of yeah. perfect point? I mean, it's, it's just like, you know, open my big fat mouth and I end up changing the flipping windows at Barney's, you know. And that was a joke. Because I was supposed to do, uh, I wanted Izzy to be in New York when Lee was there. So mm. I thought, great, so I was with Dennis Friedman. And then I said, oh, and I could change in the window. And then as the day approached, I thought, yikes, because this is about, um, you know, these, these, are, <laughs> these are my dead friends. They, these are my best friends, and they're dead. And I said to Dennis, I do not want a glass of water out of this because, you know what, it's a it's a commercial space and it's a fine line and also I'm, I'm not someone that's used to being in front of a lot of people I, don't, I just you know on set fine real people yeah. terrifying so I just I don't know I, I mean I cried all off all my mascara in the car and just sort of I went from the last look I did for Lee into Sarah and I'm a bastard I mean the idea of me having my hair I mean Jesus if anyone tried to see me doing my hair and makeup it Sort of, you know, it's trial and error. I mean, so I just sort of slid across the table. I was covered in scratches, I mean, for weeks, and I still got marked. But anyway, got through it. Well, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, which is a, a, something that we vaguely talked about before the stream started, was the exhibition at FIT. Oh, wow. That was put to me about two years ago, and of course I put it at the back of my head, and I thought, well, that was in two years, and it's going to be nothing. And, and the more it approaches, the more I think, Oh my God. Anyway, they've taken most of my stuff and 
Because you co curated it with Valerie Steele. Yeah. yeah. She's fantastic. Really, really great lady. It's for the students. That's why I stopped the Izzy sale, really, is because I want to do, after the FIT thing, I'd kind of like to do an online. I didn't know how to do it, but by that stage, maybe I'll have the sort of a way to do it. But, but for sure, with Julia involved, her sister, because people forget she had a sister and a family and friends that actually liked her. Mm. Not all these death wagon people who sort of like, you know, they all appreciate everybody as soon as they snuffed it. But, you know, when they're around, niente. And it, so that, so I thought, well, if I get that online, and um, because you know, if you're in New Zealand, you'll be able to. Because she had a fantastic sense of style. It's, and it definitely needs to be kept separate from mine because we're two different people. It would be, it would be. It, it, I just did it. it. Was really just to stop the sort of kind I of... Think I remember reading you saying yeah. just the idea that so you don't want people swooping in and getting them, you know... Well, yeah, and also... Mementos but and now it's a kind of hot potato because it's not for me to be the guardian of the flame. Mm -hmm. but So that's why I want her family to be involved. And I also think that the people who have made money out of it have already done it. And I think, uh, I think as a record of, of her and, and what she did for British fashion is, is, and art, uh, is quite extraordinary, um, and and I and I want and I and I think she'd be very very happy with this. Is that I think that uh, especially for the artists that would have lost a lot of their archives, it it would be great and to show younger designers, people that are interested online, something something because people very rarely do that. And I'll try and make it not a completely sort of like uh, bottomless pit. Pit of, of kind of losing money, but 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 free so that people don't have to. I mean, you know, because everything costs something these days. I mean, why not do something good for a change?